it's hard to pay the car and things like that. And then they lied and committed fraud on the fact on what I made monthly and I never lied to them. And I have all paperwork to, to show and prove to them, prove that. We turn now to an item exclusive we've been working on for months. They filled out applications to buy cars, but several customers of Lawrence Kia well, they say the dealership inflated their monthly incomes in order to seal the deals. As Andy Alcock reports, documents we've obtained show a pattern of this practice, which could, it be, could be a federal crime. And one former employee told us the list of victims is long. Well, I went online, you know, and just looking at what was available. Herb Vance thought he found what he was looking for, a 2015 Dodge Ram pickup truck with low mileage within his price range. To buy it, Vance made the four-hour drive from his Oklahoma home to Lawrence Kia and met with a salesman. Then he told me that the Ram was gone. It had been sold the night before. Vance says after getting the runaround for hours, he ultimately bought this pickup truck. Here's Vance's original credit application. The retiree wrote, looking for a half-ton truck around $400 or less monthly. We showed Vance that paperwork. Total monthly income, $2,000, right? Right. That's what you told him, right? Yep. He ended up with a monthly payment of about $1,000 for the truck. How could he qualify for such a large payment on a $2,000 a month fixed retirement income? Vance found out the dealer submitted this application to his lender, claiming Vance's monthly income was $9,961, nearly five times what Vance stated in his credit application. If I'd have done that to somebody, I'd be in prison. But it was very, very widespread. Mark Cavanaugh left his job at Lawrence Kia in April. In part, his job was to handle customer complaints. He said the final reason to leave was when he was given a list of customers to call. He provided us because they all had the same issue. Their incomes were increased on their credit applications for their loans. It was at that point he said he realized how widespread business practices he'd been questioning for months really were. From the short time that I became involved, roughly a couple of months, I uncovered hundreds of deals. Hundreds? Hundreds. And they, every time they inflated the customer's income to the e bank? Every time the income was inflated. Yeah, I don't make nowhere near 3500 a month. I wish I did. When we spoke to Cody Cole, he was finishing up his senior year at KU. As a Jayhawk scholarship football player, Cole gets a $1,500 a month stipend. That income was reflected in his credit application with Lawrence Kia for his car. But when we told Cole Kia submitted the application to his lender, showing he made $3,500 a month, he went to the dealership to demand answers for a car payment he said is higher than what he wanted. They got real, I want to say, uh, paranoid about the situation and told me that I wasn't allowed to come back and I had to speak to their attorney. I entered the accurate um, amount of my monthly income because I'm honest. Sasha Jefferson said she didn't think twice about it when she submitted her car loan application. Then she later found out Lawrence Kia had increased her monthly income from $3,103 on her credit application to $4,403 on her loan application. That fact was confirmed in this letter last December from Jefferson's lender, Wells Fargo. The letter says in part, we have reached out to the dealership and confirmed that the income was altered and that the dealership is willing to take the vehicle back and unwind the deal. Jefferson eventually settled her problem with the dealership. But after being told Kavanaugh was responsible, she decided to go after him individually for a cash settlement. He um, offered to make it go away. Not once, not twice, but three times. Jefferson provided the 41 Action News I-Team an email exchange with Kavanaugh. When she threatened to sue him in a February 6 email, Kavanaugh offered 5 k for a complete release and settlement. Kavanaugh's email the next day bumped that offer to $7,500. Three days later on February 10th, Kavanaugh offered her 10 k Kavanaugh said dealer owner Chin Rajapaksha offered to front the money, but no deal was ever reached. And the reason I did that was to avoid any kind of protracted litigation with her. Kavanaugh denied submitting any deals to potential lenders at all. He said only Lawrence Kia sales managers have the logins and passwords to do it. And every submission has an electronic fingerprint showing which manager submitted credit applications to the lender. I, I had nothing to do with it, and I just could not continue to be under that pressure. One mess Kavanaugh said he helped clean up was Nautica Emberton's case. 
I feel like I was set up. Records the 41 Action News I-Team obtained show Emberton submitted a credit application listing her total monthly income as $1,600. But the application Lawrence Kia sent to Emberton's lender showed she made $4,311 a month. I can't even comprehend how they're getting away with it. Kavanaugh said he was able to get Emberton's deal reversed. Who was responsible? According to an email Kavanaugh's attorney provided, it was dealership sales manager and part owner Kevin Morrissey. When another sales manager sent Morrissey an email asking, Kevin, what did you do? Morrissey responded, clearly made dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. We tried to call Morrissey and also left him a text message. So far, without response. But documents we've obtained show it wasn't just Morrissey. While Kavanaugh said the salespeople had no idea what was happening, our documents show, and Kavanaugh confirms, other sales managers, in addition to Morrissey, submitted credit applications to lenders with inflated customer incomes. I think the people that submitted the deals, I think they should be held accountable. In addition to Emberton, Jefferson, Cole, and Vance, 41 Action News obtained dozens of other customers' credit applications and the subsequent loan applications Lawrence Kia sent to lenders. In every instance, the dealer inflated the customer's monthly income in the loan applications. Kavanaugh said the reason wasn't just to sell cars, but also to sell high profit items like gap insurance and extended warranties. The higher payment you can get, have a customer pay for a car, the more products you can put into the loan. Chin? Mr. Roger Pacha? I got nothing to say to you. You got nothing to say to me? After multiple phone calls, we went directly to Lawrence Kia to speak to owner Chin Rajapaksha. A document Jefferson sent us showed he was aware of her case last November. He wrote, in part, I'm looking to settle this matter at your earliest convenience, and offered her options including voiding the car deal. All the customers who talked to us, Jefferson Vance, Cole, and Emberton, said Chin contacted them about the inflated incomes listed on their lender credit applications. I think they're all responsible. I truly think that they are all responsible. I think Chin is responsible for allowing his employees to do that. If Chin had said when the first person came forward, stop, they probably would have stopped. You don't know anything about that? While Raja Paksha wouldn't speak to us, the dealership's attorney sent us an email. Referring to all the credit applications we've obtained, it states in part, Lawrence Kia contacted local authorities about the data breach. As for the income alterations on those applications, the attorney wrote, Lawrence Kia has made every effort to reach out to customers who have or may have concerns about the information submitted to their lender. I'm investigator Andy Alcock, 41 Action News. Well, we showed our documents to longtime defense attorney and former criminal prosecutor James Spees. Clearly egregious uh, falsifications of, of income. So looking at that, I submit you likely have numerous federal violations here. Uh, it could be, depending on how these documents were transmitted, it could be mail fraud, it could be wire fraud, it could be bank fraud. Spees also said if federal investigators uncovered enough cases, an organized crime or RICO case could be brought against Lawrence Kia. However, at this point, it's unclear if a case has been or may or may not be opened against the dealership.